Now we've basically completed our explanation of why Huckel's rule works. Using these Frost diagrams, now we've seen uh, what the basis is for the 2 plus 4n rule for pi electrons. Uh, hopefully uh, it's making sense to you. I'll, just, I'll do a couple more examples just uh, to hopefully make it even clearer. So let's do a couple more examples illustrating the principles that we've seen. Let's try to figure out whether this molecule is aromatic or anti-aromatic. Now, I'd like you to give that a shot. Now, of course, you already know how to use Huckel's rule to determine whether this is aromatic or anti-aromatic. So I'd like you to do this problem without using Huckel's rule. Instead, I'd like you to use a Frost diagram. Try to use a Frost diagram to demonstrate whether this molecule is aromatic or anti-aromatic. Pause the tape and give that a shot. Well, we're going to have to rotate the molecule first, because in this picture there's two corners at the bottom, and the Frost diagram only works when we have only one corner at the bottom. Remember, it doesn't matter which corner you put at the bottom. In this case, if you'd wanted to, you could have put the carbocation cation at the bottom, but I chose not to. Now we're going to draw a energy level at each corner. One, two, three, four, five. Now let's count how many pi electrons we have. There's two electrons in this pi bond. There's two electrons in this pi bond. This atom also has a p orbital, but because it's a carbocation, this p orbital is empty, so it's not contributing any pi electrons. So we have four pi electrons total. Well, let's place those pi electrons. The first two go in the bottom energy level, and then we have two more electrons left over. One of them goes here, and then because of Hunt's rule, the other one goes here, and the other molecular orbital that's at the same energy level. So does this look stable or unstable? It looks highly unstable, which means that it's anti-aromatic. Because we have this pattern of having two, we, uh, we have a di-radical pattern two unpaired electrons, so this is anti-aromatic. Now notice now that we were able to prove it was anti-aromatic without ever using Huckel's rule, just by using the Frost diagram. Uh, but let's confirm that Huckel's rule would have, uh, that Huckel's rule would have worked. Well, since we have four pi electrons, we could think that we have two plus two pi electrons. Four is two plus two. Well, we know that this does not fit the pattern for Huckel's rule. Huckel's rule is that you start with two and then you add multiples of four. And here we're adding two and just um, adding another two, not a multiple of four. So using Huckel's rule, we would already have predicted this was anti-aromatic. But now we understand why it's anti-aromatic, because these two electrons by themselves cannot fill up these orbitals and we end up with a di radical. Do another example of the same type. Again, we'd like to try to figure out whether this molecule is aromatic or anti-aromatic. And again, let's not use Huckel's rule. Instead, let's use a Frost diagram to try to decide whether this is aromatic or anti-aromatic. And then you can confirm that using Huckel's rule and make sure that you got the same answer both ways. So give that a shot. There's no need to rotate the molecule because we already have a single corner at the bottom. So we simply draw an energy level at each corner. Now we need to count how many pi electrons there are. Well, there's two pi electrons in each pi bond. And we should know that a carb anion always has a lone pair. Because this is a carb anion, even though I didn't draw it, it must have a lone pair. Um, so what is this carbon going to do with its p orbital? It's going to put the lone pair in its p orbital. So we have six pi electrons total. Four in the pi bonds and two in the lone pair. So let's place those electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six. Does, look, does that look stable? 
Yes, there's no unpaired electrons, no dye radicals, so this is highly stable, which means that it's aromatic. Here we have an aromatic compound. And again, now we were able to determine that this molecule is aromatic just by using pi molecular orbital theory without having to have memorized Huckel's rule. But let's confirm that Huckel's rule would also have given us the correct answer. We have six pi electrons. Another way of phrasing that is that we have two plus four pi electrons. Two plus four is six. And now you can see this does fall into the pattern of Huckel's rule because Huckel's rule starts with the number two and then adds multiples of four. So we can see this would fall into Huckel's rule and that would also predict that this molecule would have been aromatic. Well, that completes our explanation of why Huckel's rule and the 4n plus 2 rule works. Uh, and to finish off, uh, I'd just like to uh, uh, say a little bit uh, more about molecular orbitals. Um, so uh, if you're uh, taking a non-rigorous OCHEM class, you might not really have heard all that much about molecular orbitals. But if your OCHEM class is somewhat rigorous, um, probably molecular orbitals have popped up um, a fair amount um, in the class. Uh, my experience is that most students do not like molecular orbitals. Most students find molecular orbitals confusing uh, and they don't see what the point is. Uh, so I hope that if you've made it to this part in the videos, you'll start to agree with your professors that molecular orbitals are cool. What's so cool about molecular orbitals? Well, our whole goal in science is to be able to explain our experimental observations. So if you go into the lab, you can do experiments, and the experiments will show you that molecules that satisfy Huckel's rule are very stable, and molecules that don't satisfy Huckel's rule are highly unstable. But nothing you do in the lab can tell you what the explanation for that is. So to a scientist, it's really cool that we can use molecular orbital theory to understand where this pattern in the lab is coming from. Uh, so I hope that you find that a little bit neat um, as well and start to have a little bit more of an appreciation um, for why professors like their students to understand a little bit about molecular orbitals. The reason is that using molecular orbital theory, we can actually explain a lot of patterns in OCHEM that would otherwise be um, much more mysterious and hard to understand. We've only shown one example. We've shown how you can use molecular orbitals to understand Huckel's rule, but there's other things you can use molecular orbitals to understand um, as well. And this is the reason um, why organic chemists find molecular orbitals interesting and why they like students, in, even in, in the introductory survey class, to be introduced to molecular orbital theory. But remember again that our goal here was to take a deeper look and to understand why Huckel's rule works. Uh, but remember that you don't actually have to draw the frost diagram for every molecule to determine whether it's aromatic or not. Um, all you have to do is count the pi electrons and see if it falls into the uh, list that um, is consistent with 4n plus 2. So I'm not saying that you should do every problem about aromaticity by actually drawing the frost diagram. Um, you can still just use the 4n plus 2 rule. But in the back of the mind, it's good to understand why that works. And you should understand that you could always um, show why any particular molecule is aromatic or anti-aromatic by using the Frost diagram, even though you're not going to do that on most problems.